Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today again. I'm sorry about the mess behind me, I'm still remodeling, but it won't always look like that, so just ignore it for this video. Castlevania Netflix. Man, do I love this show, and I hate it at the same time. I finished it last night and watched the whole thing in one sitting. It's four episodes, about 25 minutes each. And it left me wanting more so badly. I, I get it, when shows first start, you'll have that first season that's only got a couple episodes. Walking Dead did it. I think that had like five episodes or something like that. So I get why it's so short. But there is good news. They renewed it for season two officially with eight episodes coming next year. And that's why I hate this show because it's making me wait. I want more now. All right, let me calm down. I don't hate the show. I, I quite loved it. I'm just a little butt hurt that I have to wait a whole year to get more. I don't even know like what I'm going to do till then. I'm just going to be thinking about it all year until it comes. This review does have spoilers because I do not want to hold back talking about this show. I don't give a fuck. So again, spoilers. And we're going to compare it to the game that it's based off of also. It's amazing to me how many trailer reaction videos I saw online that got the information wrong. When the trailer first aired, I typed in on YouTube, Castlevania Netflix trailer reactions, because I wanted to see what everyone thought. Over half the videos I saw were just full of misinformation. I, I specifically remember one where the thumbnail said something like, Castlevania Netflix explained. When you watch the video, he's explaining that the show is based off the original Castlevania game for the NES, starring Simon Belmont. And he had a screenshot of Trevor, by the way, from the Netflix series, and he's talking about Simon. It's completely wrong. The series is based on Castlevania III, Dracula's Curse, starring Trevor Belmont. The prequel to the original game, which tells the story of Dracula's first attack against humanity. I was honestly impressed at how well the series told the story of why Dracula decided to wipe out the human race. Let's take a look at the NES game real quick. This is the entire story. Just a couple of paragraphs before the title screen that weren't even written that well. And then you just start the game. Storytelling in video games wasn't really an important aspect of gaming back then like it is now. Video games nowadays are equivalent to movies and actually sometimes they even surpass movies. Back then you just kind of hit the start button, went on your adventure and fought a bunch of bad guys. Now over the years Castlevania has had a bunch of prequel side stories and, and sequels that fleshed out that storyline and filled in all the details. And the Netflix series takes its time building up all these characters and these situations so you understand all the characters and all their motivations. It might only be four episodes long, but they're not rushing anything to fit it into all four episodes. It all progresses slowly enough to where you can get attached to these characters, but you're not bored waiting for something to happen. There's always something going on. I've been wanting something like this from Castlevania for years. There's been a couple attempts to make live action movies, a direct to DVD release of Dracula's Curse, and now we have this Netflix series. Now we have something worthy. The main reason that Dracula hates humans in the Castlevania universe is because of what happened to his wife Lisa. In the video games, we get a brief glimpse of what happened to her in Symphony of the Night, but we really don't know anything about how her and Dracula met, why they fell in love, we just know she became his wife for some reason. Then she was burned at the stake after being accused of being a witch. The series turns her into a town doctor that was searching for knowledge to help the people of her village. So she heard of Dracula having all sorts of knowledge in his castle. Within just a couple of minutes of starting, the series shows us the bond between Dracula and Lisa. She wants to learn from him and convince him to use his knowledge to help mankind, and she encourages him to travel the world and live among people. The world is changing. Travel like people do. You might like it. And Dracula is intrigued by her wittiness and her fearlessness of him. I am Vlad Dracula Tepes, and I do not get many visitors. What have you to trade for my knowledge? Perhaps I could help you relearn some manners. I've crossed the threshold of your home and you haven't offered me a drink or even to take my coat. I think I might like you. They don't spend a lot of time developing their relationship in this first episode, but it's enough so first time viewers understand how they fell for each other and why. Something that was never really touched on in the games. We also see when Lisa's burned at the stake and it's, it's pretty brutal. I know it's not your fault, but... If you can hear, 
They don't know what they're doing. Be better than them. And Dracula, just wow. They made him terrifying. Eventually, he finds out what happened to his wife while he was away, and he just completely flips out. I give you one year for lucky answers. You have one year to make your peace and remove any marks you have made upon the land. It's crazy, because he's this ridiculously powerful vampire that decides to wipe out all of humanity, and he summons a demon army that does horrible, horrible things. Now, I'm not saying that if someone does something bad to you, that you should turn around and, and, and commit genocide. But in this Castlevania universe, I, I, I could see why Dracula lost his mind. For the most part, he wasn't really bothering anybody. He was just this vampire hiding away in a castle isolated from mankind. In fact, some people didn't even know Dracula was real. They just thought he was some kind of myth to scare children. Oh God! Dracula! He was supposed to be myth! A story made up by heretics! Shit. And then he meets this woman who accepts him for who he is, falls in love with him, marries him, has a child with him, and then she's murdered because of her relationship to him. I, I wouldn't even say that in this first season that Dracula is really the main villain. And that's where the genius of the show's writing really comes in. You've got Dracula spearheading this invasion of mankind, but somehow the main villain really is the bishop of the church. He was completely responsible for the execution of Dracula's wife, and what he decided to do on his own is what caused Dracula's wrath to just rain down on mankind. It's because of this guy and nobody else. He's this power-hungry man that uses his religion to twist everything, and he's constantly shifting the blame. He's just completely insane. You think the Night Horse came because people weren't religious enough? The woman was a witch, and there can be no doubt now that she consulted with the devil. My God, you really believe it, don't you? And what's even better is that he's a made-up character, but he fits so perfectly into the story, and he's just, he's despicable. By the way, you're all going to die. What? The current bishop of this place is... Well, he's beyond insane. Over the top and into new lands of just snake fuckingly crazy and convinced that the salvation of Gracia lays in you people being torn to pieces by a mob. Trevor Belmont was easily my favorite character and the main character of the game too. His personality was perfect. The NES game, clearly due to limitations of technology at the time, it didn't give him a personality at all. He's just a little 8-bit sprite moving around the screen. He was also in Curse of Darkness on the PS2, and he popped up every once in a while, but his personality was never really established. He just has a couple lines. In the Netflix series, he's the last remaining Belmont, since they were driven away from the land by the church who feared their power, just like the games. My family. The family you demonized and excommunicated has fought and died through generations for this country. And when we first get introduced to him, he's this drunk asshole that doesn't care about anything, yet he's entertaining as hell to watch and gets into this huge bar fight. Everyone knows the Belmonts dealt with monsters. The Belmonts fought monsters, son. What's your name? Jesus of Nazareth. Mm. Oh. Uh. I used to fight fucking vampires. I'm Trevor fucking Belmont, and I've never lost a fight to man, nor fucking beast. And he gets hit in the nuts twice. Try again. Would you please leave my testicles alone? 
Eventually, he sees all the pain and suffering that Dracula's armies are causing, and as expected, he decides to become the hero that he was always meant to be. And now Dracula is carrying out an execution order on the human race. Do you care, Belmont? I didn't. No. But now... Yes. It's time to stop it. And Trevor's future wife, Sypha, is also in the show. And just like in the game, they work together to fight Dracula's forces. Sypha! Whoa! Having played Castlevania 3 a million times, I was analyzing every scene, examining how they translated these 8-bit graphics into a modern animated style. And let me tell you, the team behind the show absolutely paid attention to the source material. In the show, Trevor discovers that Sypho was turned into stone by a Cyclops, and then he has this battle with it, which is a boss battle in the game. Then after he kills it, Sypha comes back to normal. <sighs> These little details left me so impressed. And the series also details that Sypha is part of an organization called the Seekers. They're trying to help the land and practice magic. So of course, the bishop is trying to turn the people against them and blaming them for all the monsters. Dracula's son Alucard also appears in this first season, trying to stop his father from destroying the human race. If you loose an army of the night on Wallachia, you cannot undo it. And many thousands of people just as innocent as her will suffer and die. There are no innocents! Not anymore! I grieve with you, but I won't let you commit genocide. And Trevor and Sypha find him in a coffin and wake him up, not realizing who he is. This is another moment where they paid attention to the details. In the NES game, you have a boss fight with him, where he's just kind of testing Trevor's powers. Then after you beat him, he joins you. And it happens the same way in the series, with this epic fight between the two that had a smile on my face the entire time. And I also really enjoyed the tension between Trevor and Alucard before the fight even started. I felt like I was watching a boxing match. I was just ready for them to go. What I think is I'm going to have to kill you. Belmont, no! Do you think you can? If you're really a Belmont and not some runt running around with a family crest, you might be able to. You've got nothing but insults, have you? A tired little... <laughs> Castlevania has always been a really dark story about vampires, demons, monsters, and I'm glad to say that the Netflix series doesn't hold back at all. It's most definitely a hard R-rated style. There's a ton of gore and violence. It's definitely not for kids, nor should it be. Season 1 does end with Alucard deciding to help Trevor, so I fully expect that the 8 episodes coming up for Season 2 are going to have them going through the castle. I'm sure they'll find Grant, the other hero that ends up helping them. They'll fight Death and Dracula at the end, saving the day. I'm hoping that we get a ton of seasons, because Castlevania is a series 
that has so much ground to cover. What Netflix did with Castlevania was amazing. They took this simple NES game with very little story and turned it into a quality series with detailed characters full of backstory and motivations. Like I said before, yes, it is short, but what's there is great. This series is a perfect example of quality versus quantity. And we're getting more. It's an understatement when I say that you should watch this. Even if you don't know anything about Castlevania, you can go into the series and still come out understanding who these characters are and what's going on overall. I think we're getting to a point where we're gonna start seeing a shift in how video game adaptations are made. We're even getting an Assassin's Creed anime made by the same producer behind Castlevania. I really think this is going to be the future of video game projects, so I do hope that we see more franchise get that Castlevania Netflix treatment. Stay tuned for the next video I'll be posting, which is going to be the Castlevania Timeline Part 3, Passing the Torch. If you haven't watched Part 1 or 2 yet, you can go ahead and click the playlist right here in the corner of the screen and it'll take you right there. And make sure you leave me a like and a comment down below if you enjoyed this review. I always love to hear your thoughts. Remember to subscribe and click the box for notifications if you haven't already and follow me on social media too. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I will see you next time.